your boy Bleeve Everybody listen up Let's get it I'm trying to put money in your pocket That crypto wallet That bing bada bing ching ching big profit Even when the market sideways I'm looking for ways to get paid I'm checking my coins around breakfast Then again around bedtime Bet this It's not financial advice <laughs> But I'm always right 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 I'm a real go-getter Rock a fur coat But it's not chinchilla Who's that dude With the master plan It's Mr. Pinecone With the mic in my hand I ball on a budget Got a bag full of nuggets Living life to the fullest Before I'm kicking the bucket No time for the haters I'm the meat and potatoes I'm the product of Anunnaki and godly invaders You wanna go down the rabbit hole Well come along with me Let me phone home Let me take you on a trip To the Pleiades Or the seven seas We can sail them all Bring your dungarees And your toothbrush Your knapsack We'll have a nightcap Then I'll bring you back Mr. Pinecone's come a long, long way So everybody get sideways Sing it What is going on, everybody? My name is Bleaves. This is Breakfast with Bleaves, uh, where we feed you a diet of news and crypto information so that you are informed for the day. And you know what's going on. And you know what is going on right now? Uh, green in the market, except BNB. BNB is down 2%. Uh, and it's just now happening. So there is something going on uh, with BNB at this exact moment, which I don't think it's, you know, uh, if I probably put it into Twitter as a breaking news update, what is going on with BNB? Uh, we're probably looking at 4,600 tweets in the last hour. So something is happening with BNB. Let's take a quick look here. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think there's anything. I think maybe it's just the market. Uh, I think it may be just the market. We're not looking at anything tr catastrophic. Um, yeah, so whatever's causing BNB to dip while the rest of the market is pumping, uh, it's probably not major. It's probably not, uh, not, not a real problem or anything like that. So uh, other than that, the rest of the market is at least up a little bit. Uh, interesting though, to see that, that BNB is starting to move maybe by its own, uh, drum, uh, which would be incredible for the market because it will have broken away, uh, just like we hope to break away from, uh, the regular markets. Maybe, you know, this is, maybe that's what's happening right now. So let's close that out. Uh, let's look at the, let's look at the 24 hour volume synthetics, uh, SNX, by the way, one of those, uh, FTX, uh, side projects up 12 and a half percent. Uh, starting to move a little bit. Quant was up 12, uh, 13%. Uh, Lido, XRP having a run. By the way, the news on XRP is that there is no news on XRP. That was uh, uh, that was not true, what was coming out of um, uh, Fox News yesterday. So, uh, but otherwise, you see, you know, five, six point, uh, six point increases um, it, up and down the chart. So there was some green in the market, but Look, even if you have a good run like this and you're still down big over the course of seven days, uh, you know, Trust Wallet, by the way, uh, now that CZ uh, is talking about Trust Wallet and calling it the banger, uh, then it is up 100% over the last uh, seven days, which is, uh, that's amazing uh, for Trust Wallet because it is one of those projects that everybody trusts. So uh, good for them. Uh, other than GMX over here, uh, up 22%. Again, you can just kind of look here and you can see that uh, there's not a whole lot. There's not a whole lot of positivity. So you know, hopefully we're going to see some positivity coming very, very shortly. And this right here is the one that might give you a little bit of hope that maybe we're going to have something good happen right here uh, because we have Dow futures up 366 points, uh, S&P up 71, and the NASDAQ's up 324. These are massive 
numbers. This is a 1% increase, a 2% increase, and a 3% increase with implied opens that are looking really, really attractive right now. And it looks like there are some great opportunities. Um, this is, by the way, uh, when we look at it, uh, you will see uh, some notes for me over here. Uh, I, I do believe that the stock market has had a breakout. The Dow Jones uh, has had two days over a trend line that it's formed over the last year, which would indicate a breakout. Now, if a breakout happens and the stock market does start to pump, then that's going to be great for business. That, that's going to be great for business uh, because that when you make a little bit of money in the stock market, then you take some of that risk and you throw it at, and you throw it at other things. And one of the things that you throw it at is crypto. And, uh, you know, we, we look at the market and we say that, you know, one of the big problems here is um, one of the big problems is uh, what they're um, uh, what these exchanges failing. But guess what? Those are overseas exchanges. FTX is not in the United States. FTX US is. Um, and uh, even though FTX US is in the United States, there was this situation in which uh, the day before they actually filed bankruptcy, they said they were not going to be filing bankruptcy on FTX US, that it was entirely safe. But I really think that this is some manipulation where they're trying to muddy the water uh, because they are trying to steal money from FTX USA. Uh, I do think a class action lawsuit will probably pop up from you, you uh, from FTX US holders saying that that is not part of that. It's a, a separate entity and that it's a, it's not insolvent in any way. Like, I, you know, I think that they're going to make a play to try to keep their money not associated with FTX overseas. So and maybe they'll be successful at it. We don't know yet, but uh, everybody wants their money back. So, you know, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how much Tom Brady gets. Uh, by the way, Giselle Bunchen already out with her jujitsu instructor. Um, yeah. So let me tell you what that means. Uh, while Tom Brady was TB 12ing and leading the, the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, to a Super Bowl, jujitsu guy was hitting it. So, uh, yeah, she's already in the, the probably the Bahamas or, you know, someplace sunny with her jujitsu instructor right after they announced that they are getting divorced. So, ho got a ho. You know what I'm saying? Ho got a ho. So, anyway, now it's time for the real news. And, uh, yeah. Giselle, you dirty skank. All right. One of the biggest news articles that we've seen in a little while that kind of shows you the state of cryptocurrency. 2022 crypto layoffs account for only 4% of total dismissals, uh, which would indicate that the amount of layoffs that are happening across cryptocurrency are not nearly as big as what's happening in some other industries. This is actually a great sign for the industry as a whole, uh, not because... Uh, not because it means that crypto is doing well, but it does represent that crypto is already operating fairly lean and not overpopulated. I think the one that was a lot was Coinbase. And uh, you can see, um, yeah, you can see the layoff last week. Coinbase laid off 1.2% of its staff, 60 members. Uh, you, you know, you probably save a few dollars on that one, uh, save some payroll there. Um, and I don't look if you if you work for Coinbase, I don't want to disrespect you by saying I'm, I'm saving on payroll or anything. Um, but it is, you know, this is the, all of these things are businesses. So uh, they're saving on their payroll. That's what's going on. And no disrespect to anybody who uh, might be part of that. But um, this really speaks well for the future of cryptocurrency to know. Uh, ETF provider Valkyrie Investments was the latest company to let go of roughly 30% of its staff, um, it, but you don't really see a whole lot of it. So uh, it's a great sign for the crypto markets. Uh, Bitcoin revisits 2017 highs moving on. Will it trigger a recovery? And the short answer to that is yes, it will. This is where we are. Let me tell you, uh, uh, I'm going to just circle it right here. This right here is a spot, and then this right here is a spot. And these two things have something in common, and that is Ed 
Snowden, which I'm I'm left-handed, but I'm using a mouse in my right hand. So if it doesn't look good, that's your goddamn fault for not buying me a left-handed mouse. But uh, so, yeah, Ed Snowden, the guy who um, told, tattletailed on the U.S. government, uh, told everybody right here right here that he wants to get back into bitcoin after a long time because he had a feeling it was about to go crazy right and guess what happened god damn it it went crazy now over here what did edward snowden say uh two days ago edward Snowden said i've got that itch again i feel like bitcoin is about to run and that means here we go again hopefully so uh, definitely a good sign, especially when somebody like Edward Snowden, who is, look, he's a nerd who pays attention to this kind of stuff. Um, he's pragmatic, uh, data driven. And I, you know, if this guy is talking about he thinks that this is the moment, then we, whether you doubted him or not last time, he was absolutely 100% right. And within months, we were going absolutely bonkers right now. He hit that bottom. Maybe what he's trying to tell us is that that is the bottom right there because it is hitting the top of that 2017 high. So it is entirely possible that this is one of the, the most bullish signs that we could possibly see. Um, in fact, Checkmate, Checkmate, the pseudonymous lead on-chain analyst at Glassnode, took to Twitter to highlight that the Bitcoin realized dominance currently stood at 59% and is rising. As illustrated below, the current levels were at a multi-year high yet again. Uh, even they were only seen back in 20, uh, December 2017 levels before this. The rising dominance of Bitcoin is perhaps one of the few silver linings of the ongoing bear market, stressing the importance of the realized cap relative to the market cap, the analyst said. Uh, market cap is a metric that allows the SBFs of the world to run their uh, high, fully diluted value scam valuations and dupe investors. Realized cap is the ultimate valuation tool as it requires tokens to truly circulate and thus influence the daily trading volume to pressing prices. So, um, yeah, so it looks like here, whales, shrimp, crabs, sharks, fishes collectively accumulate Bitcoin. And we are seeing, um, it, it looks like something like $1.3 million per day uh, is coming off of the exchanges right now, uh, which means it's going into cold storage, which would indicate uh, that it really is uh, starting to happen where we're seeing uh, day in and day out. We're just seeing people start to put their stuff away and take it off of exchanges. And this was before the collapse of FTX. Uh, we were seeing money, money, more money than normal being moved off of exchanges, which indicates that they're going to hold it for a long period of time. They're not looking to actively sell or trade, which is usually a good indicator that price momentum is going in a positive direction. Also, Binance, uh, CZ explains plan of action if an FTX situation arises. Um, during a recent AMA session on Twitter, uh, Binance's CZ addressed the downfall of centralized exchanges while affirming that his exchange wasn't facing any such issue. Uh, but he's like, hey, you know, centralized exchanges sucks, but, but not mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't have loans. We don't have debt. We don't owe anybody any money. We also did not give out loans out of the platform. So we never take users assets and give it to a third party to manage and try to make yields. And that's really, um, that's probably the best thing that you want to hear from anybody who's holding your money. Like we're not giving it to somebody else in order for them to try to screw us over. In addition to this, he pointed out that even if such a scenario arises, which is arising, by the way, uh, Binance entailed other means to survive. This would mean that the platform wouldn't block withdrawals, even if its centralized exchange was forced to shut down. Elaborating on the same, CZ added, if everybody withdraws their fund from the centralized exchange, we just shut down the centralized exchange. We have many other profitable businesses that we have. Now, uh, one of the things that he called a big risk was uh, loans. And guess what? Uh Binance announced two days ago that they were offering loans uh, for cryptos that qualify. And I don't know what qualifies yet, but um, I, I assume that it's going to come out of a fund. 
Uh, CZ seems to be a fairly smart guy, uh, sharp, good on the uptake. So I would just imagine, um, I, I would just imagine that everything will be all right. But you know what? You never know. Uh, moving on, on-chain data reveals Alameda acquired specific tokens a month before FTX listing. Are you shitting me? How the fuck can you find out about tokens that are about to get listed on FTX a month before? Know that those tokens are about to pump. Put your money in these tokens. Pump the charts knowing that they're going to be listed on FTX and you still can't make any goddamn money? Oh, my God. You people, you nerds, you're not even nerds at this point. Like, look, if Gilbert and Lewis from Revenge of the Nerds had the same scheme right here, they would be trillionaires. They would be trillionaires. Ogre would be their bodyguard. Nerds. And, and, but look, instead, we have Carolyn Ellison going, <laughs> I don't even use mail. <laughs> like, oh, my God, what is going on, really? I mean, for real, like, how does that even happen? How do you get inside details on tokens that are about to be listed and that are about to pump, and you can't, oh, my God, you can't pump them? Are you shitting me? Like, how bad... Do these people have to be to not be able to? Oh my god! Uh, by the way, uh, Carolyn Ellison has now fled to Hong Kong, where she belongs. Oh my god! These nerds are just killing me. You know, in my day, in my day, nerds were smart. You know what I mean? Like that's crazy. That's just this is crazy to me. Crazy to me. Just just. Absolutely bonkers. And also, by the way, uh, so <laughs> conflicting reports, by the way, either the metaverse is dead or it's not dead, right? And, and I don't think that um, dorks, okay, I'll, I'll buy dorks. Metaverse of entertainment expected to grow to almost $29 billion driven by consumer spending by 2026, the study says. Now, um, that is a pretty good, uh, that, that seems to be a pretty good lick if you uh, consider the 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 market capitalization right now is 4.45 billion, right? So that seems like a pretty good, that's a seven X or so six X from where we currently are, which by the way, other than Alethea's artificial liquid intelligence, other than this rando here, uh, you can see right here that there's no, none of these are pumping right now. None of these, um, you know, none of, the, none of the metaverse is really getting after it. Uh, even my buddies over at Starlink are down 26% uh, over the course of the week. Uh, you know, seven days. Uh, Alethea is, again, the big the big winner so far. Uh, but Battleworld, um, Ave Gachi, uh, Benzene, uh, you know, all of these different tokens out here uh, are down just a little bit. But, I mean, you know, you go down this list here. And you can see that some of these are just down massively. Um, so, you know, people are, are kind of shying away from that market right now. So uh, a $26 billion valuation in the next market. Okay, um, I'll take that. But, um, you know, I don't know if it's just, I don't know if it's going to be that easy. Uh, I, I do know this, that there's no real game out there that has lit the world on fire to the point that people have said, you know, we have to, like, there has to be uh, Second Life, which is massive. Um uh, World of Warcraft was was just massive. Like you know, the, this I think that I think we need one of those massive Roblox. It, it, it was massive. Minecraft was massive. Like we need one of those massive sort of games to become part of that crypto adoption, and then I think we start to see this thing blow up, or at least one of those runoffs. Um, you know, like the so, um, uh, and to, to be fair here, I am I am a real proponent that the metaverse, when played right could be uh not enough to earn you a living wage but it could be something where you earn uh where, where you earn money for like resource gathering which people like to do resource gathering you think about that stupid farm game that took over facebook for a long time farmville imagine if you were actually rewarded with small amounts of crypto 
for playing that game and that crypto at some point ends up, you know, during a bull run becoming valuable and all you've been doing is collecting crypto all that time. You know what I mean? Like, so, it, it, you know, possibility certainly exists that that this could be a growing uh, sort of market. Uh, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, also, defunct billion dollar crypto because it's pile on time, by the way. Uh, everything is the fault of FTX. Uh, defunct billion billion dollar crypto hedge fund three arrows capital speaks out blames collapse on FTX. Kyle Davies here. Um, Kyle Davies, founder of the collapsed crypto fund three arrows capital, has lashed out at FTX, claiming that the exchange hunted their positions during the Luna collapse. So, uh, one of the things that we knew was Citadel was behind it. One of the things that we also know is that Citadel trades on FTX. So. Alameda was probably working with Citadel um, to attack positions on the Luna chain during that collapse. Like, that's exactly what was going on. So um, now we're getting more information. And uh, by the way, uh, there is uh, two things that that are, are kind of important that we'll get to. Um, that one of them is some lady from Huobi had a... Uh, had a spaces and in her spaces she said that cz knew what was going on uh that you know he wasn't involved in it but that he knew that something was going on with ftx but he remained silent during all of that right uh Huobi seems to know what was going on and they remained silent through all that so when i ask you do you trust cz binance i want you to remember what CZ Binance probably knows about cryptocurrency up and down the line, what he knows up and down the line. I don't, people, we, you know, I've, I've talked about this before and I, you cannot be a billionaire and be a benevolent, good person. Like I, I, I just keep saying that. And, you know, it's not because I'm trying to shit on people because nobody is really a good, noble sort of person. There are very few. We all have flaws. We all have issues, right? Well, his issues is he's covering up for people who are just absolutely devastating and crushing you financially uh, and absolutely screwing you over for money. And how cool is that, that he knows, but isn't saying anything about it? Like, that's insane to me, that this is the guy that we're putting on the pedestal. Um, let's do Huobi. Uh, so what would we say along with that FTX? Uh, they have some money stuck in FTX, by the way. They're throwing a couple of hot buttons here. Um, here we go. Wendy from Huobi from 1900 about FTX, SBS, CZ, Binance, 3AC. She was not shocked by what happened. She says SBF destroyed 3AC and committed a lot of fraud and other crimes. But she's also saying, you know what? We're going to. I'm going to retreat that because I'm going to listen to it a little bit later on. But, uh, you know, basically she's saying that they all knew about it and nobody was saying anything. So don't trust these fucking people, man. I swear to God, do not trust these people. Uh, keep your money in a decentralized wallet, keep your money. Don't leave it on a centralized exchange. Don't even go to sleep at night with your money on a decentralized exchange. Oh, Jesus. Uniswap tokens, let's move on here. Uniswap tokens gains as trading volume jumps, Bitcoin and Ether slip. So uh, we did see a tick up in Uniswap. So, and, and what that means to me, by the way, if you are not uh, paying attention to VoltiChange, uh, and that is the new decentralized exchange. It's coming from Volt. And look, they are not looking to take over the market. And as you can see here, their market cap is already up over 107 million. And by the way, it was at 39 million two weeks ago. So I'm tell I'm here to tell you that Volt is coming for you. Uh, and they are going to pump this thing to the moon. Uh, there is a tier one exchange on the menu. It's my understanding. Uh, the developers were interviewed by NASDAQ just recently, which is, that's a bullish indicator. Um, 
but there is a tier one exchange and the launch of Volta Change. And those things happening at the same time lead me to believe that, as you can see right here, that we are headed back to this all time high. And when it gets to that all time high, uh, the Volta Change, uh, the, the Volt team is going to burn 1 million tokens of supply for this process. So the all time high right now is five zeros, 3627 is trading at five zeros, 1628 right now. So it basically needs to double the market cap and then some. Uh, it's going to need to get to about a 250, $300 million market cap one more time for one more big run. But uh, at this point, it could also uh, just kind of 10x. Uh, I mean, what's what are we sitting at right now? Um, 10 and a half, nine and a half ETH. So, yeah, I mean, like it, it's um, it's starting to get it's starting to run. You know what I mean? Like, like it's starting to run. Um, I think uh, I think the bag over here on Volt uh, is still now worth like mine is worth 12 or 13,000. So, you know, 10x is 100 grand. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but. Uh, it, Volta Change, Uniswap, all of these decentralized exchanges, they are going to have a big moment. And with that, um, the final piece of news here, which just Nigerian crypto startup Nestcoin says funds stuck in FTX. So if you got money in Nestcoin, you better get that shit out right now because you about to get wrecked, son. Uh, don't leave your money on exchanges. Just don't leave your money on exchanges and you will never have a problem. But you know what? You'll never also have a problem with either believes doing technical analysis, which we're going to do right now. All right, guys, as you can see right here, we are at eight hundred and eight billion dollars. Uh, and you remember, I keep drawing this chart out. I just keep drawing it and keep drawing it and redrawing it to try to find out like where in the hell are we just to kind of make it look like I'm, I'm, I keep trying to just, you know, maybe this is not right. Maybe this is maybe we're moving out here now and it's just playing out a little bit longer or something like that. Like, you know, whatever, whatever could be going on. Like, I just think that the market is we're in this we're we're definitely having another pennant coming from the downside. 80% chance that this goes down one more time. So, uh, but I think that maybe we're looking at the grand, uh, that, that's going to be that grand downward movement at this point. And that after we hit that big downward momentum, uh, once we get that big dump, once, it, once it's done, then I, I do kind of feel like maybe here we go. You know what I mean? Uh, Dow Jones, by the way, is up 302 points. Uh, 306. Okay, so uh, having a nice run to start off the day, but uh, 808 billion in market cap. Uh, yesterday, uh, this is where we were. We were at 760, uh, 768, uh, 24 hours ago. So we are up 40 billion in market cap in the crypto uh, landscape as we sit. So you know, a little bit more money coming in here is not going to be a bad thing. Uh, would be nice, by the way get back up to a trillion that's 25% more in the market 25% more in the market is 25% more market cap for a lot of these big tokens 40 or 50% for some of the smaller ones well it'd be about 15% for bitcoin 20% for ethereum uh and then 30% for the rest you know uh going up but um it looks like uh we're just kind of primed everywhere i everywhere i keep making those lines it just keeps looking like it's breaking out so you know it's possible not not guaranteed, but but it's possible that maybe some of we're gonna we're gonna get some news that we're not gonna like. But it looks like you know maybe some of the bad is behind us because again, like you know, this is the one right here where you know if there's gonna be a breakout, this is the one, right? Because Ethereum seems to always have that positive momentum. But all I keep doing is basically moving the bar and moving the bar and moving the bar on this. And I don't think moving the bar does anything at this point. The, like, I think we're legitimately breaking to the upside on Ethereum right now. It doesn't mean that it's going to sustain. doesn't mean that it's going to do 
anything more than maybe hit 1340 and just kind of go sideways. Like, I don't know where it goes beyond that. You know, the market is just way too uh, volatile, messed up right now. Uh, Dow Jones is up almost 400 points now. Uh, so we are in uh, an absolute pump mode. So uh, that's pretty cool. Um, Luna Classic. Uh, I feel like there's more downside on Luna Classic. And I think that that's kind of evident in the way that it's lining up. But um, when you, you take all of this stuff that we've done here before and you kind of look at it, then, uh, you know, maybe you can make an argument that we are due for. I, you know, it's due for a pump, obviously. Uh, it, it is due for a pump, but you can kind of see here that we've got this sort of trend line playing out this way and we've got this dump down here and it's playing out this way. So, I mean, this this to me means significantly more downsize and it should go down below this. Otherwise, it's not really a, a, a dump. But, you know, I said 1200 the other day. I was guessing, by the way, I didn't have any data to back me up to say that that was going to be the number. But, you know, it, it's the the longer that this thing plays out, the less enthusiasm there is for Luna Classic for a little while. Doesn't mean there won't be uh, l like, listen. If uh, if if trading goes way down on Luna Classic, I won't care because I'm not here for that short term play anyway. I'm here. Just let that shit sit for a long, long time. Uh, what I do think, though, is I think USTC is going to continue to make a pump. And I think that it's going to pump into here and maybe get into this 45, 47 range. I still believe that that one's going to be on the table uh, and that we're going to see that one play out. So uh, just kind of waiting at this point for that. Uh, I may end up looking at this chart a little bit more, uh, a little bit more closely um, and zoom out here and say that, you know, maybe this, obviously we're touching these points up here, but maybe this down here is more like right here and here and here and here. And then maybe this is just kind of trending that way and we don't have such an opening because you can see here. This is a point of uh, this was a point of um, support and it was a point of resistance. Uh, it was uh, resistance here. Uh, it was support here. It was support here. So, you know, maybe this is the actual trend line and that it's not that ascending sort of channel at this point. But that, that would indicate that we're bouncing off of whatever it is that we're bouncing off of. And, you know, this right here, this chop is going to end up pumping up here because, you know, you've got to point out this has happened over and over and over again. And just if you maybe just say the tops or something like that, you know, it, it's still going to be a significant lift and it's going to put us into the 40 or 50. And I have uh, full disclosure, moved all of my Luna classic. That was X excess. Uh, my staking is still 10 million, 717,000. And I'm still sitting on 29,262 for staking, but I had a hundred thousand Luna classic and I traded it for 954 USTC. So now that's worth 126,000. So I'm up a little bit because I had 101,000 Luna Classic. So I'm up, you know, just a little bit of a percentage on that. So uh, that's pretty okay. But I do expect this thing to pump just quite a bit more uh, at, at some point. Like I'm just waiting for that moment. I think positive sentiment in the market, once we start to see a little bit more pump out, out of this, again, when the risk factors start to increase, then I think we see a whole bunch more money start pumping into Luna Classic. Like I, I just, that seems to be the way it is. Uh, Dogecoin, um, not sure how this corrects. Um, let's just dump everything on this chart, uh, the drawings. And it looks like we're just kind of, we're, we're you know, we're, we've got a descending flag, so uh, probably more downside there. Uh, since we didn't get the news on XRP that we were looking for, this makes no sense. So we'll probably see a correction back down now that we've hit this point, which is resistance. Uh, it, it's either, you know, if the market pumps, then uh, then the next point is 43. But I don't know that it will. Uh, and then down here, Shiba is starting to turn green. So if you got in when I told you, good for you. Uh, Crow is now recovering nicely. Again, I got in down here uh, the other day, so I'm feeling pretty good about this. And I'm going to sit here and ride this out for a little while, hoping that it comes up here uh, to this 13 area uh, again. And we start to test this. Uh, you know, if people are going to be nervous right now. People are going to have a little bit of sentiment 
in the negative for uh, for it. But, you know, we'll see how it plays out. Uh, Matic might get off on another big run pretty soon. Like, I think, you know, all of this stuff just looks like it's coiling up and it's waiting for that big moment. Uh, BNB is now in the positive again today. So, uh, but Quant had another big run. It's up 11%. Mina Protocol again continues to um, to pump up ten percent on the day, and um, yeah, that's where it is. Bitcoin dominance uh, hovering right around forty percent. Uh, Ethereum dominance at about nineteen and a half, continuing to move upwards, uh, and the rest of the market is down here where it was over twelve and a half percent. So um, now let's get into chat and let's see what's up. All right, guys, tell me what is going on. Um, let's, uh, you know what? Shit. One more time, because I'm an idiot. Um, let's go check out real quick. Lit is up 38.4%. So if you watch my uh, uh, if you watch my video on Lit, uh, I am partnered with them. So you'll see another video today. But they are up 38% since we did that video. Um, a, a nice big move to the upside, still micro cap. So we're not talking about a lot of money. So uh, don't come at this thing with like one or two ETH that you're looking to put in here. This is like, you know, this is a small cap sort of degen play uh, that they're looking to grow in, in that regard. So uh, don't throw a ton of money at it. But the big, the big one of the day is Volt now at 1634, continuing to pump. It just can, absolutely continuing to pump. Every time it consolidates for a little bit, every time the market conditions uh, go bad, it's it's just moving along with the market, but it is on cruise control at this point, up to 108 million market cap. Don't get left behind here. Um, Lillian is at 22.35, up 16% on the day. Uh, terrarium finally starting to move back. Now, I don't think Terrarium has a run in it uh, for another couple weeks. Uh, it could move, uh, and it can move today. I think there's a, uh, uh, it's my understanding at some point today, uh, Dean from Crypto Stackers um, has an AMA that's coming Uh, so there we go. Crypto stacker. Um, there is a, an, yeah, so there's seven people waiting. Uh, looks like it's going to be in about, uh, two and a half hours. So there's an AMA with Terrarium. So we'll get more clarity. We'll know what's going on with Terrarium then. Um, as you guys have probably been aware, there seems to be a whole bunch of people in my neck of the woods that are shitting on terrarium and um, like I, I look crying about a crypto just to me seems childish. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know, you know, I, I, I don't know why uh, I, I don't know why some of these guys that are, that are my friends are wasting their oxygen on some, and I don't know why Milton is, fighting back like jesus christ it makes no goddamn sense um but they shouldn't be doing it in the first place i don't i don't know why ryan and austin and all these guys are they're just look um and they can have an opinion and and, and it's fair enough for them to have an opinion uh and it's fair enough to state the opinion but to, i mean they are putting a lot of effort into trying to fud um let's put it this way um, everybody who's invested in terrarium right now, they are just actively trying to fuck you over. You know what I mean? Like, and, and they can tell you, Oh, I'm, I'm not, I'm just trying to give you my opinion. No, it's not. That's, that, that it's literally called FUD for a reason. That's what they're trying to do. And, and I, I, I mean, again, you can disagree with, uh, what terrarium is doing. I don't like the fact that T-Pay is outside that ecosystem, but you know, it, 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 it because it seems kind of weird, you know, for, for it to be outside of the ecosystem. And Milton's going a long way to try to show people that it was never part of the roadmap or anything like that. But Milton is not taking his uh, March 28th tweet and saying, hey, everything that's built 
will be part of one ecosystem. He's not he's not using that one. You know what I mean? Like like he 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 doesn't for some reason use that tweet uh, when he's making his point. And he really should. Like I mean, it's important that people know that. You know. Um, so you know, I mean, we'll see where it goes. But again, the the at the end of the day, here it is. This is still a, a massive sort of project. This is still a major U.S. exchange launching that will be a U.S. exchange as well. Uh, and, you know, those don't crop up every day, but uh, and, and it will have some work to do. But, you know, generally speaking here, uh, it will create some value. It will create some listings for the token. Uh, and as the market conditions improve, uh, be the fact that, look, if Terrarium is listing a bunch of different other exchanges tokens, then those other exchanges are going to list Terrarium and Terrarium is basically not going to have to pay. It's just going to be the good old boy system. Uh, you know, so I, I just really feel like Terrarium is about to get a lot more exposure than we really think. So uh, I, I like, I don't have a problem holding on to it for a little while. Like I'm only in for five grand. So like, I'm not, you know, I'm not married to it. You know what I mean? Like, I I, I think I would like to see it catch fire um, and do about double where it is now or about triple where it is now. That would sure be good. Uh, if, it, if it goes back to that all-time high, by the way, um, if it goes back to the all-time high, that would be another, like, 70 grand for me. So, like, I do want it to go back to the all-time high. But... <laughs> You know, I it's just I, I don't care. It, it's it'll it'll be fine in the long term, and I'll make a dollar off of it. That should be that's gonna be enough for me. Uh, MMAI is up five point eight percent to twenty four sixty seven, um, and that is worth a half an ETH at this point. Half an ETH, roughly half an ETH, which is about uh, six hundred and thirty dollars. So. You know, it's not setting the world on fire, but it's still got a strong liquidity pool, which is the important part here. Uh, Wagme, 3065. Hulk, 4731. Yin, uh, holding firm at 6594. Kodachi at 1176. Deconnect at 5197. Uh, some of these are going to have pumps coming pretty soon. Uh, by the way, I think I should have this thing that says powered by Deconnect on my screen here uh, up at the top of this. Like I said, I think I'm going to try to rework this uh uh, this Deconnect logo up at the top, uh, so that it says powered by Deconnect. Um, also, if you have not already, and I don't know if it's launched yet, I have a new series coming out. What It is uh, going to be the history of Bitcoin. It's going to be one of them. And then uh, it's going to be the history of, of cryptos. So I started with, uh, yeah, so he's not done with the stuff. Uh, but it's going to be the history of Bitcoin, and then it's going to be the history of Dogecoin. And then I think this weekend I'm doing like the history of Shiba. And if I get time, like I'll pick out something else, like maybe the history of Ethereum or something like that. But, you know, it, it's it's kind of interesting to to deep dive on some of these tokens. And I'll take, you know, going down the list, some of these um, some of these bigger tokens and like the history of BNB, uh, the history of XRP, the history of Cardano, the history of Polygon. Like, cause it, it turns out that that kind of shit is fascinating. So maybe we'll see how that plays out. Austin's like, okay, I'm done with terrarium. I just think it's funny how, right. There it is. Like, it, it, like I, I'm not talking about them anymore, but I will tweet about it. I, I don't know, man. I, you know, everybody can do whatever they want. I mean, you know, it just seems silly to me. Um, look, I, I, I'm at the point, like, why waste hate? You know what I mean? Like, there's plenty of things that I can hate in the world. Um, why waste it on a cryptocurrency? You know what I'm saying? Like, for fuck's sake. Just seems childish. You know? Voltage is coming. you goddamn right it is. Um, uh, you know, I, mean, I don't want to lose. I don't think I'm going to lose it, so I'm not really worried about it. I think the state of the market is not good for Terra Exchange to release yet. Maybe that's why they keep pushing it back. Um, I don't think so. I don't. I don't think that matters. Uh, I think that um, you know they they they're a, a couple of wealthy doctors and pilot, and I think they have the money and the resources in order to make the launch successful. 
and they already have the employees on their payroll. So they're already cashing out every month $145,000 of the liquidity in Terrarium in order to meet that payroll. So I think they really should launch it. Uh, I don't know if expenses are going to go up because of it, but you know, it would seem to me like this would be the perfect opportune time for them to do a launch. So, uh, and also because it is a United States regulated crypto exchange, that seems to me to be a great idea. Like, like, you know, that instill, like it, go instill confidence, you know, come out with proof of reserves, have your own dashboard that shows exactly where your money uh, is going. And you know what I mean? Um, Matter of fact, history of Litecoin, I thought was going to be my second video, but then I thought like nobody even bothers with Litecoin anymore, really. Um, even though Litecoin, for those of you who don't know, was the second crypto ever. Um, and it was made uh, as kind of a, a, a complement to Bitcoin. And so, yeah, I was actually fascinated as I was researching that that was the, the number two and how it's still around and... Yeah, I, I really kind of uh, was thinking about that one at some point. So, yeah, it's that's going to be one of them that we do. Aren't you on house money after the Binance Live? Oh, yeah, I'm absolutely on house money. Um, so it doesn't matter, but still my money. So the Binance sham was your first warning with Terrarium. Um, terrarium is sham wowing us. Okay, well, if I'm here saying I told you so, a little bit later on, because I still made a whole bunch of money off of it, then that's, you know, ha ha. Yeah, I mean, uh, how high you think Volt Inu would go? Uh, Snoop Dogg. Uh, B, I give shitcoin zero strikes. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like if you do something really, uh, ban protocol would be a good buy at $2. Um, be interesting. Might be on my own thoughts. Uh, what's up, Baron? I mean, I, you know, so here's uh, the the way I see it is very simple. Um, as you evolve as an investor, uh, as an investor right now, if you don't have a whole lot of money and you're looking for a wish and a pie in the sky, it's easy for you to overlook uh, like Diggy's saying right now. Uh, but <sighs> Diggy, why can't you just have your name be Diggy? Jesus fucking Christ doobie um it, it's like he says uh like you know you can give you can give them one strike if you already have the resources where you don't have to and you can spend most of your money in the altcoins or bitcoin market but if you're looking for that pie in the sky then it's easy to uh just kind of skip over um it, it's easy for you to just kind of skip over some of the problems that are inherent with some of these tokens so uh, you know, when you look at a uh, when you look at like Terrarium and you don't like the fact that Binance.us uh, was doing that. Um, could it be that some guys who just don't understand cryptocurrency thought that they were showing a letter from Binance uh, because they legitimately believed that they uh, how do I say this? Uh, because they legitimately believe that they were going to get listed on Binance.us because they were an exchange. And even though we don't see it as an exchange because uh, we haven't seen the exchange yet, uh, for these guys, they think that they're getting listed on a major exchange. And when they start getting what they felt was screwed, then they wanted everybody to know that this was not on them, that they were getting screwed. And it would be fair enough for them to post it. Now, everybody who's a conspiracy theorist in the crypto space uh, just starts to turn it into, well, they were deliberately lying it to pump the price, but you can't find anybody in the in the team that was selling the tokens anyway. So the entire argument that you have is just bullshit to begin with. Like the, the best you can say is that they weren't smart. They weren't savvy and they didn't understand um, they didn't understand what they were doing. And if you say, ha, 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 oh, yeah, they did. Well, then where's the sales? Because Dr. Praveen's wallet's not touched. The only wallet that really gets touched from the developers is like $145,000 a month in order to pay for their payroll. So 
I mean, keep saying shit about them, but none of none of your bullshit makes it true either. You can you can not like it, and that's fine. I mean, that's that's your prerogative. You can say I don't like this token. Cool. Uh, other people do, and it's okay for other people to still like it, and there, and it's okay for other people to not want to uh, not want to pull out because they believe that in the long term this is going to be a long term play. And that at some point it will turn around. So it, all of that is okay. Uh, but what is not okay um, is when people are shit talking it. Who and, and listen here. Here's the thing. Here, here's the here's here's where I would say I have a problem. Not everybody is on the A team. Not everybody is on the same crypto journey as Rodney. Not everybody is uh, on the same journey as Ryan Patrick. Uh, but some people invested because of those guys, and now they see it shit-talking. Uh, now now they see it being shit-talked, and now they see um, uh, what's going And they can make their own decision. They can say, well, I don't like the fact that that's going out. That doesn't mean, like, I saw it, and, like, I'm not crying. Like, I'm not, I'm not being a whiner about it. Like, it seems so odd to me that you would even waste your time complaining about the like like there's a lot of people out there that legitimately just like to piss and shit on everything because if they're not in it or you know whatever the case may be um they, they don't like it but guess what they leave behind a bunch of charred broken investors who trusted them to make that decision so um you know it, it, and it's okay it, it, it's okay if you change your mind it's okay if you change your mind uh but uh you know why are you continuing to FUD every one of the people who trusted you that still didn't get out because they're down or because they're in a position where they're not going to get their money back uh, for a long time where they consider themselves to be wrecked at this point? Uh, and, and then they see you shitting on them because like, you're not you're not shitting on you're not shitting on the project. Nobody gives a fuck about the project. Look, if I put out a video like I put out a video for lit yesterday and lit immediately shot up 40 percent. That's not because I put out a video. I'm an advertiser. I'm putting out an advertisement. And then the lit people then started to share that. Now, if other people saw that and they decided to invest because that's not because of me, that's because of them. It's because of the work that they do. I am just an actor putting together, uh, putting together content for people. Like I'm not uh, that, that influencer thing is the easy way for me to say what I do, but that's not real. Like I'm uh, like, look, I do have influence. I understand that, but I'm creating an ad for people. Oh, look, WhatsApp wants me. Haha. <laughs> but like, that's the, that's the way that it is. And for, for it, it's, it's, it seems disingenuous to me that people would just dump on it. But I mean, look, here's the thing. This business has a way of showing you who your friends are and who your friends aren't. Uh, the one thing that I'm going to say, no matter what, from A to Z, is that the most honest person in crypto is fucking Rodney Sorensen. Um, he always tells you exactly what he thinks and doesn't give a fuck. Now, does he troll people? Yes, he does. Uh, but you pursue an agreement with that man knowing that that's what could happen. So that is the way that it is. Um, everybody else, they don't do that. So, and th very, th this is, I'm, I'm not saying this is not a good point right here. Uh, I, I don't understand why he can't stop. Like I, it makes no sense to me. Like chill out, please. Because it, he's not doing them any favors either. And I even made a post about that to him directly where everybody could see it. Like, you know um don't act like like dude don't act like a youtube influencer you know what i mean act like the ceo of a company you know what i mean like like uh rise above everybody else so terra chart is okay here let, let's let's okay let, let's do this let, here is terra's chart and let's do it on a day chart because uh, that's about the only comparison that we can make to kind of show you the chart on one screen, right? 
This is terrarium's chart, right? This is the bad project. This is the shit project. This is the project we know likey because this one be ugly, oh, bad, oh. Uh, but what about... Jesus fucking Christ, I hate this goddamn computer. Tell me what the difference is because, um, you know, while we're doing this, uh, there is uh, one guy that we're talking about who is the chief marketing officer for this project. Now, you tell me. You tell me why one's better than the other. And then if I say something like, well, well, you just don't understand. No, I don't fucking understand. Because there it is right there. This one started right here. At least it's still right here where it started. This one started up here and it's all the way down here. Well, you just don't understand. Now, uh, excuse me. I can look and I can see. So um, why is the, the, the chief marketing officer... Why is the chief marketing officer of this shit chart talking about this shit chart? Why is, and, and, and believe me, it's not just, it's not just one. Uh, nobody in Saitama better say shit. Do you know what I'm saying? Like MMAI looks like the Saitama chart because it started up here and now it's way down here. But guess what? We're not talking shit about MMAI, are we? Because we know we're an insider. We know inside details about how good it's going to be. Okay. There's the fucking chart. Like, it's it's pretty simple to me. Like, and and, and I'm not, look, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a mental giant. But I can see. I can see what a chart looks like. Now, here's the other thing. I still have faith in what's going on with MMAI. I, I still believe that it's going to have a moment where it starts to pump. And I still think that it's got a technology that might cause this thing to go way above where it was previously. Like, I don't have, I don't not believe in the product. I just still believe in Terrarium. And I still think that Saitama is going to probably do a 10 or 10 or 20 X, you know, just because, It will, because we're in a bear market right now. And the bear market is, uh, the bear market is where shitty people shit on stuff. You know what I mean? That's what, that's where shitty people shit on stuff. Uh, the bull market is when all sins be forgiven because you can make a mistake right now. You can't make a single mistake without somebody being an asshole. And it's just ridiculous to me. That's all. It's just ridiculous to me that people would do that. So anyway, that's my time. Uh, thank you for tuning in guys. I uh, appreciate everybody for coming in. Um, don't mean to get off on a rant sometimes like that, but you know, I got an opinion and it's my goddamn show. I get to share it. So, uh, it's not financial advice. My name's Bleeves. I am always right. We will talk to you guys again soon. Uh, I have a show at 6 PM tonight. It's going to be utilities in action. Uh, I am hosting it for Adam Shelton for deck uh, it'll be powered by deck And then, uh, I have another one in two days that will also be powered by Deck Connect, and we will talk to you guys again uh, at uh, Bedtime with Leaves at 8 p.m. tonight as well. I'm looking for the good life, good night. Sitting on top of the world, I want to be shining like-